dun 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 so i've been sponsored by canon hi everyone welcome to uh ryan cook carvin tool talk tuesday and we are going to talk about bars today bars 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 what's a good bar for uh just getting started what's a good bar for pushing forward when you're more advanced when you have a couple bars and you want to build on your uh, arsenal and what will work with what and how like we've talked about before this video is going to go somewhere i don't really know i'm naming out some topics and i hope i hit them but i'm not sure i'll get to them all so here we go cannon bars what's the best bar for you and how do you fit it onto your bar? So the majority of the carving bars right off the top are going to fit on all of the saws. You know, still husky. The mounts kind of don't change. It's a C1 mount. And, and actually, the reason we're doing this video and also not doing this video is because bah, 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 sawvalley.com is loaded. And I can ship pretty much anywhere, ideally Canada, North America. Uh, I can ship them wherever. I've got bars. And I was a little nervous about it. I know I've been talking about doing saber tooth, doing that kind of stuff. But this was a huge investment. So if you want to support this, the page, you want to support my uh, channel, go to sawvalley.com, go to the bar shop. We've got 8 inch 043, 8 inch 050. We got 12 inch dime tips. And like I was saying at the top of this video, I've been sponsored by Canon for going on 10 years in May, which is insanely amazing. I never knew there was a 10 inch dime tip. A 10 inch dime tip. I mean, are you kidding me? This is awesome. And for the 2511, this saw. <laughs> That's exceptional chain speed. I find with the 12 inch on the 2511, it's a little bit slow. So if you're cool with like having a little bit slower of a chain speed, and when I mean chain speed, I'm talking about how fast this is going around the bar, just in case you're new to carving. And I actually, I wanted to kind of veer off into another zone. I think I'm going to start a new page. And it's it's going to be strictly, strictly for beginning beginners, just only beginners. Or I'm going to do it on this page. I don't know. Let me know what you think about that in the comments. Should I just do it here or should I start a whole new page? I don't know. But next year, we are going to be pumping out videos. And I'm going to pump out videos over the Christmas break. I've got like six in the queue. So I'm just going to do it because why? Yeah, the advertising is the best for YouTube at Christmas time. But uh, right now, let's talk about bars. So let's get it right off the top. You just started carving. You got a, a stock saw. It comes 3 8, comes 3 2 5. And we're talking that's about the chain. Uh, 3 8 is the chain, the size of the chain, right? This is 050, this chain right here. That means it's a the the gauge that runs along the bar is 050. It is not as thick as a 3 8 or a 3 2 5, but your standard saw, unless it's a uh, steel, steel not working saw, they sell quarter pitch chains. I think the Echo DCS 500 battery saw comes as quarter pitch chain now too, but I think that's 043, and a lot of still ones are 043 also, which is the micro chain. I personally, ooh, this is going to get deep fast. I'll try to keep it simple though. I like 050. Now, for a beginner carver who has just bought, in, say, an MS17, the 2511, a 501P, who has not bought a saw yet that wants to buy a saw that can maybe do everything for a beginner. Now, I have said it before, but since we're doing a bar video, I think that we should talk about what is the best bar for a beginner. Now, that for me is the 12 inch dime tip. And I like my 12 inch dime tip on the 501P for everything. 
It has the chain speed to go fast. It has the capability to do detail. It is a little heavier, but it blocks out better than this. And if you're doing speed, 50cc, 36cc. I find that the 501P is the way to go. You know, if you're just buying your first saw, this is actually a 490. So this is the CS490, which is one of the older ones. This is a cheaper version, I think. I can't even remember. This is just an old saw that had a 12-inch bar on it. So I'm just doing it for reference. Um, I think that when you first get started, the 12-inch dime tip is probably the best one. And, you know, the great thing is, is I have 27 of those in stock at sawvalley.com. Sorry about this. This I am in a plug saws uh, bars because I just invested lots of money into uh, to getting you guys bars. I had to wait eight months for them. And, I'll, and we're going to talk about all the bars. The reason I, the, if you go to my store, I only got bars that I love. Uh, there's no, nothing wrong with other bars, but I only pick the ones that I find to be the best bars for me. Do you know what I mean? And I think that's going to be the best thing for, well, that's just, the, it's, it's better for me to sell what I believe in rather than, uh, you know, put something out that's not as, you know, that, 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 uh, that may be like something like a 16 inch toonie. I don't have use for that because if I'm going to go a toonie, I'm going to go up to like a 24 inch toonie. Uh, <clears throat> And then I'm going to talk about one of my new favorite bars also. So let's just get back to it. So the, if you're just getting started, the 12-inch dime tip, I think, is one of your best all-around bars. Canon makes the best one. They fit on most all saws. I really, really find it to be the, the, the best versatile bar and great to learn. You know, the reason being is you can block, you can detail. It's not too forward heavy. You know, once you start moving into like a 14, I think this is a 14. It's a 14 or a 16. I think it's 14. So this is a, I'm going to say, well, maybe it's a 16. This might be a 16. But once you push up, and that's kind of maybe you got your second, uh, your second saw, your second bar, or your second, you, you're thinking, okay, now I need to get, more something for bigger cuts, a little more power. And I run all of these on quarter pitch. You can run three to five, but I run quarter pitch. And the reason being is I keep it echo or uh, Canon only recommends you have a dime tip up to like 45 cc's. Now, that being said, Bill will not like this, but I run my 12 inch on a 50. And I'm not saying you should do that, but this is why I run my chain very loose and I never, ever run it at full, full throttle for very, very long. Sometimes if I'm trying to make a super fast cut and I need it to be consistent, I'll do that. But keep in mind, everyone always asks, why are my chains so loose? It's because when this thing is traveling, I like to have as much as little friction as possible. Now, you don't have to do it as much as I do it. This is extreme. There's probably, it's probably okay if it's like that. But, you know, you're running a 50cc saw. I don't know. Personally, I just like my saws to have that because it bends. And then as the as you're cutting down and you're turning, there's this tiny little bit of give of the chain that will bend with it. So the chain will cut and also bend at that same time. So that is why I run my chains loose. There's no sprocket on my big saws that have sprockets, on my big cannon bars that have sprockets, I definitely do that. I run them a little tighter, not super tight. I'm always a little looser, but you know, they're just, Something to be said about this is extreme for this saw too. And keep in mind, this is 24, yeah, this is 24 inch toonie. 
three eighths low protein. You can do three two five. Actually, Sam Bowser and uh, Chris Wood, they swear by three two five. I've never had three two five chain. I always have three eighths low pro, just because it's uh, been something I've been easily able to acquire. The chain on that does snap faster than I think a three two five, because the three two five is a thicker chain. And a thicker gauge chain and also can uh, take a little more of a beating but I cut my own chains that's a whole other video um, and make my own chains and have my and buy rolls in a hundred so I, uh, I, I if I break one I just cut a new one so I know I'm gonna get a good amount of time on it so you know that we'll get to this bigger bar here in a second the 12 inch dime tip my favorite, sawvalley.com. We've got 27 of them in stock. Uh, I have five of these 10 inch, which I didn't know existed. And in the first few cuts that I've had with this saw, I really, really like it for this. It's, it's. <laughs> it's nice. It has a good speed to the chain. It's traveling fast enough where, yeah, maybe I could block out something a little bigger than normal, but this is still a detail saw to me. You know, if you're just getting your first saw and you need advice on your first saw on what to get, that's actually a question I've been getting quite a bit. That's why I'm thinking of doing a whole new page. But the first thing that I think of would be to get a 501p if you don't have the money get the cheaper version of it which is more of a stock version um, but i find the pro pro saws are always going to be the best and that's just echo i mean as far as it goes for still and husky still i don't care about i don't like the company and uh, uh husky the husky dudes are nice uh, i just don't know the saw numbers so i don't don't really know what to tell you um, but you know, go to a local distributor and they can do it. So moving down detail saws, the eight inch is one of my favorites. There's 043, which is the micro. And then there's 050. There's a quarter pitch, quarter pitch chain, uh, is this. So quarter pitch chain is, is the smaller. The 043 is the micro. So this is an eight inch dime tip bar pretty much for my carving bars that are under 12 inches i'm only using dime i do have a couple of the uh quarter tips which have a purpose at times but for me i just think that the chain speed works perfect for the dime tip and i really like the cannon bar with dime tips for lower saws like uh you know they sell everything they sell tunies they sell arbors they could work for you if that's what you're looking for. But for me, I'm just going to talk about what works for me and why. So my my detail saw is my 8-inch dime tip on 050 chain. I personally don't love 043. 043 chain is too small. It can't run at the speeds that I want it to because it's a very delicate chain. Um, still makes a good one. Uh, Husky makes an okay one and our anchor chain, I've tried it. It's cool. I'm actually trying to get a hold of those anchor guys because I wouldn't mind selling chain myself. Sorry, I'm just vamping here. But uh, right now I'm not selling chain. I'm just selling the bars. But the anchor chain was nice. And the EMS chain that Echo makes is good. The It's a, it's a Chinese company. They just are very, very hard to get a hold of because they don't make much quarter pitch chain and Oregon used to be the best, but Oregon has completely kind of, I don't know. I mean, I don't give a shit. They've given up on, uh, th th what they're doing is they're downsizing the products that don't sell. And sadly carving chain is not the biggest seller for them. So they stopped doing the chain that has, uh, the they used to make the chain with the teeth that are dropped down on the back here i think that yeah yeah you can see it here so like i took a file and i filed those down those didn't sell for them so they just stopped making it and it's same with the 2511 sprocket i'm trying to get sprockets made 
they don't sell the sprockets. So also, just quickly on that, sprockets are hard to find. Bob King sells them. Um, the rim sprockets for the 501P are still easy to find. I think it's like 532 or whatever. Those are still easy to find. You can find good rim sprockets, but the 2511 drum sprocket is tough to find, and drum sprockets for these saws are becoming harder because they're they're just harder to find. Echo does make them, but they're not... I can't remember what it is. I think it's Echo USA doesn't want to alter doesn't want to bring them into North America because then it's technically altering the chain and they don't want people altering their saws, but that's what we do for carving. So, I mean, I don't, I don't know what to say there. I'm not saying anything bad. It's their decision, but I think they should be bringing in these sprockets and uh, you know, it's an, it's an easy thing to do. So uh, moving on the 10 inch that just came in. This is going to be nice. It is two inches shorter than the 12 inch dime tip, obviously, but the 501P is dramatically heavier than this saw. This is the lightest saw in North America that is a gas power. It's the lightest saw in the world that's a gas powered saw with the RPMs that it has, the 2511. So this has always been my go to, but when I have a 12 inch bar, on this saw i just find it slow you know and that's fine for if i'm you know feathering or <laughs> but this is way faster this is very very nice the balance is good you know like you can hang hand it out here the balance is is a little far forward you got both these saws here let's try this this is eight yeah, like I can feel the eighth a little more balanced, and I'm using my left hand where this is pulling me down just this extra couple inches. But if I wanted to maybe do something that's quick, that's not a bad cutting speed. Let's see if this has gas. I doubt it. And or if it's it's got a little gas, it might start. So this is 12 inch hasn't started in a very long time since the summer probably there we go very fast so you see the difference between the powers of the 2511 and the 501 or this is the 490 but you can see the difference and that's a very sharp chain actually that's great i uh, i haven't used that saw in a while so for it to just fire up and rip through it awesome and you notice when the echo does start especially in the winter right now you can see my breath it it echoes always start a little slower than all the other saws that's just the way it is and it's, it is what it is it's not a big deal um but that was fast. So that's why I like the 501P for kind of everything. But with this 10 inch dime tip bar, this kind of adds another element of length for pushing into better spots. And also at the same time, a little more, you know, a uh, little more like cutting speed down here, not cutting speed, but just girth. So I can get a little further, I can cut a little more. I think that this is probably going to be one of my favorite ways to use this saw. Because the 8 inch is great for, you know, texture, for uh, faces, detail work. This is going to be a little more versatile for different things. You know, like it'll be able to do, especially when I alter the chain, I'm going to drop the tooth back, drop down the rakers. This thing could actually be kind of like a mini block out. Uh, you know, smalls, something for smalls and very light. And at the end of the day, this is a great saw. So moving on to, uh, yes, here's a 501 X series. This is, this has got to be the 14. I don't know. Let's see. 
Let's pull out a 16 bar and see. So I've got 10. This is a CC116. So this is a 16 inch bar. This is 16, the 14 smaller. I love this. I love this actual setup. This is great for getting into tr tricky spots. So like, you know, here's a good, uh, good example. I've got the elk here that I'm working on and I'm here and I need to come in through here, but be able to use my tip running it on quarter pitch chain and a quarter. Oh yeah, that's perfect. Okay. Here's another thing. So the, the one thing that I, I always do is anytime I go from 14 up, I go to a different bar size. I had the 10, uh, 14 inch dime tips, but personally for me, I find they heat up, especially, I mean, they, they won't heat up if you have a, like a 40 CC saw, cause that's what they recommend the dime tip to have. But when you've got a 50 CC saw, and you're running running it as hard and fast as you can you want the quarter tip because it's enough speed there's enough give so it doesn't burn this tip out obviously like most saws have an oiler uh screw i always have mine on full blast no matter what so if you haven't if you didn't even know that that exists go in there turn it on to the max and you'll watch that it'll start puking out oil. And obviously, uh, we'll, I'm going to do a video, oil, an oil video comparison soon to all the different oils that are out there. I've got a bunch of ideas that are going to come out next year. And if you guys have any ideas or things you want to see, drop them a line in the comments. Leave me, uh, leave me some stuff. I want to make this more interactive. But the quarter pitch, uh, quarter pitch, quarter tip from 14 up is amazing. I keep everything at 050 quarter pitch chain up to a 20 inch bar, still running on this same saw. So I will have that, the 20 inch, which is like here, just for like super rare cuts when I'm plunging in. And that's a bar that, you know, you don't need to get until you have multiple. Oh, sorry, I need some water. You don't need to get that one until you have actually, you know, an arsenal of saws. And, or, you, you know, you have the option to switch them out. But I'm, I'm, I always like to have my saws set up, you know, especially if you're just like, getting started so just let's uh let's veer off into a whole other section now into what saws do you need what do you need you really only need four saws i think i have too many saws as most of you have probably seen if you watch my video uh and you sometimes see into my trailer or behind me i love having multiple saws multiple options of saws and then I've been saving them up for 12 years, you know, luckily Echo has been a great sponsor of mine, but I take care of them. I have, you know, this 490, I don't even know if they make this saw anymore. I've had this saw probably 10 years or no, 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 uh, seven, eight years. I, I do the, you can kits. Echo makes a, you can kit where you can do it yourself. So I'll use like air filter, water, uh, gas filter, and new spark plug every year, clean it out, and I try to take care of them. Use run, I use armor, uh, Aspen or red armor fuel, which really works good. But so, so four saws, like when you're first getting started, having a saw that can do blocking, I just think that the 501P is the perfect one. This you pay for it, the X series, it's probably six, seven hundred bucks. You get a rim sprocket and you get a 12 inch dime tip on it money in the bank. Um, and then you want to go down to a detail saw, 2511, or a battery saw. There's really good battery saws out there right now. I love the new Echo DCS uh, 500. 
you got to alter it a little bit. But I love this saw. And the thing I love about this saw is, and, and what's great is I'm actually going to change this bar finally because this is like a 10 inch 043. You can see the chain is a lot smaller. So this is 043. But the one thing I've noticed is Echo's 043 is a little bit bigger than Stills. And I love, I love the consistency of that. And the reason I really noticed, started noticing it is when I was in Chetwin this year, Brandon Kroon, uh, he, he was using it because he was making such precise cuts. So here you can tell the chatter. See that? Even at full throttle, it's still five. We're here. That's kind of the perks of the battery saws. Um, I'm just getting used to it. This is new to me. I mean, I'm old, I guess I'm becoming an old school carver. I don't know. I'm trying to keep up with the times, but I don't fucking know. <laughs> so uh, the battery saw is nice for consistent. You know, you want to... You have a very consistent cut. We're here. Same deal, but not as precise because there is the bah, pops of the piston. But there's something to be said about, oh, my one headphone is going down. Hopefully, hopefully y'all can hear me still. I'm just going to keep it in and I'll listen to the battery low, battery low. These are ISO tunes. They're good. I actually am going to do a video about comparing Beats, ISO tunes, and another four other headphones that I have right now and what works, what doesn't. This one still annoys me because of the battery low thing because it just keeps saying it. Sorry, ADD. I'm back. So your, your four saws that you need. Boom. Let's go. 620. 620. I love it. And now we're moving up. So we've talked about quarter pitch, quarter pitch chain on quarter tip saws. And I've got quarter tip uh, bars. Sorry, not quarter tip saws. Quarter tip bars. I've got 10, 16 quarter tips at 050 gauge, which is perfect for a little bit larger. Works on the 501P, amazing. And I've got 10, 14 inch quarters. I love those saws for not really detailing but for mostly for shaping just getting into weird spots when i'm just carving in general like this 16 is nice the balance is good you know it's it's not too crazy it's heavier but it's nice to like let the weight sit on something when you're blocking the and and i don't go toonies on 16s, I don't go uh, different ones. I bo I mostly focus on. I'm gonna take this out. It's driving me crazy. Hopefully the sound's still good. But the uh, up to a 20 with 050 chain quarter tip is what I will do with the 501P. So that's that saw. That's saw one, saw two, eight inch for the smallers. And then from 12 to 20, quarter tip, 050 chain, I'll use on the 501P. The, I do not carry the 20-inch quarter tip bars. Just so you guys know that, I'm not going to be doing that. If you want a custom order one and you want to wait six months for it, I'll happily do it if you pay up front for it. Um, I, I only have one of the And now we're going to move up to the 620, which is 62 cc's. And this is the 24-inch tuning. Now, I have talked about it before. I'll talk about it again. I absolutely love the 24-inch tuning. I think the 24-inch tuning is a blocking saw. And it can do detail, but it can do it all. You can lift it up high. You can, you know, like, let's see if it is even gas in it. 
And if it's sharp, who knows? So nice. It's a very, very, very nice saw. Now, oh, the gas and oil is out on this one. That's why it's uh, it was doing that. But let's see if this will hold. Will it hold? Nah, won't hold. It would have been cool if it did hold, but let's see. Uh, there we go. I'll bet you ten bucks that doesn't, sir. Three, two, one. It's totally moving. Yeah, it's moving. <laughs> Sorry for that. I just wasted 25 seconds of your time. Um, <laughs> so moving up. I do have five 24-inch tunies in stock. They'll probably be around, I don't know. It's more of a a blocking saw. You you can run it on three eighths. So if you do have a six twenty or a, a timber wolf or a, a, a you know a five ninety four husky, I don't know uh, steels steels. I don't know them. I don't care. Um, they most of them run three eighths. You can run three two five on it also. You can run a three two five inch bar on tuny tips. If you have a toonie tip, the reason they call it a toonie tip, because here in Canada, we have toonies, which is our $2 coin. So the toonie tip is about the size of a toonie coin. Now, this is a great saw for, or great bar. The 24 inch toonie is amazing. And what I have found though, is I didn't really know what an arbor tip was. Now, moving down a, a size, I used to get the 20-inch bars. I have one for sale still. But I have a 20-inch, and, and this year I asked Bill at Canon if I could try the arbor tip because it was like, well, this twen the 20-inch with, with that motor head is too fast. So I was snapping chains like crazy. But with how great the saw is. Oh, yeah, I already snapped a chain or then I'd show you. <laughs> I still snap them. So here's the saw and here's the bar. But it's funny because I snapped it recently. So this one doesn't have it. This is 20 inch. This thing is like a light. It flies like stupid fast chain speed when you're doing quick carves or if you're at a show you know in the summer and you just you got to move weight fast the 20 inch arbor tip on a 62 cc saw i mean i would almost think maybe doing a 55 cc saw would work great probably be a little bit slower of a chain speed maybe not break the snap the chain as much but the the uh the uh, for me it's a it's w the bang for your buck i mean you're 30 bucks for the chain if you buy it and it'll last me about maybe a month if i if i baby it because i'm running it at fast like i am running it fast i'm not babying it then and, and i'll tell you why i mean baby it there's two things that i've learned over the years when you have a 24 inch toonie or a 20 inch arbor tip or a 20 inch toonie tip 28 inch toonie tip that you got to really be careful of now the the main one i said two things but the main one is plunge cuts when you push it in to the log like this and this is a plunge cut you're pushing in when you go into a big log and you're plunging and you're going full speed the chain is going too fast and not it's not going too fast there's too much uh pushback on the top of the chain because it's cutting and then here it's cutting and then if it even is pushing and you're just pushing through there's too much pressure 
and too many teeth doing too much stuff and the chain can't handle it, snaps your chain. I find now that when I want to do a plunge cut and it's a new chain, I can do it, but I kind of feather it. I'll push it, give it a little break, push it, push, 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 push. And then it really is a lot more uh, accepting and won't snap. But they do snap. That's the thing. A 325 might not. That's the thing. Like I know Sam and Chris and uh, the European carvers, they all swear by 325. So if you got a 325 chain and you want to try it, do it. It probably is. I'm just lazy and I don't want to go buy a 100 foot roll of 325 on a whim, spend 8,000 bucks and then convert all of these sprockets back to three or two three two five and then have them maybe maybe not be as much difference so for me i've found a way to make it work make it work sorry my uh my my wife called to be totally honest with you and that stopped the recording so the three two five could work the 25 uh the 24 inch tuny amazing the 28 inch tuning is amazing super niche i don't carry that i have five 24 inch tunies i and and then i have five 20 arbors because if you are full-on carving and uh you know you're you're looking for that next bar that you think you might want or you're thinking about next summer because next summer is going to be here we're going to be on the road we're going to be carving like crazy um, hopefully you guys are thinking that doing shows is so good. Going to competitions is an amazing thing to do, you know, making sure you're getting out there and, uh, showcasing your work, showcasing what we do, being nice, being humble, being sweet, being kind. Um, that, that is something I think will, will be a helpful tool for you if you have a 20 inch Arbor. Uh, and then you move up into like the big bars, the super bars. I don't carry them yet. I don't think I'm going to. I'm predominantly going to focus on Canon carving bars. And then I'm trying to actually teach myself how to do code, which is crazy. Uh, I was spent all morning uploading the uh, sawvalley.com page. And uh, so there are some sales, you know. It's not just a commercial. Like, yes, I am trying to sell my stuff because honestly, like, yeah, I mean, <laughs> it's a lot of money. I don't, you know, carving is, it, this is an investment. I'm investing in all of you. That's really the truth of this whole thing is that I believe carving is going to do great. I see how Bob's shop does awesome. I see how uh, Titan's doing good. I'm nervous about it because I'm, just that's just not my style i don't really like to push and profit off of uh everyone but the fact that it's super hard to get cannon bars makes me want to do it for people and you guys who watch my page you know you're all keen to carve so come on down to sawvalley.com it's actually easier the reason i started the page was because uh bob you know can't send to canada so I wasn't planning on sending to America, but it's actually super easy. And everybody's kind of like out of the bars right now. And I don't really, I don't know. It's not really a big deal. The, the duties aren't too bad. It's way harder to ship to Canada, apparently. So I'll ship to America. I'll ship wherever. Um, you can sign up on the website and the, the website will basically run you through it. And then uh, I'm going to do some of my miscellaneous saber tooth stuff. And if these actually sell, I'm gonna use the profit to then invest into more of the store and try to like kind of only sell things that I believe in. I'm gonna do Sandiflex, I'm gonna do it all, but it's just like, this is baby steps because this is a huge investment. And now this is just fucking sitting here. Hopefully it'll be empty in a couple months, but at that same time, that's tied up right now. And I got to buy a new trailer. And we're going to do a whole bunch of stuff on that. Because that'll be fun. Um, if anybody has cool trailer ideas, shoot me a DM. I don't like posting my trailer. But I'm going to rebuild my trailer. And then once this trailer's on the outs, uh, I'll do some videos on what it is. The reason I don't is just because, you know, 
you know, it's like it's your personal space. But um, yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna build out a new cargo trailer for next summer. Kevin and I are hitting and hitting the road hard this coming year. It's gonna be awesome. We are going to be doing a serious, serious amount of travel. And I'm gonna put out the uh, thing of what we're doing. And I'm sure carvers are gonna follow it and uh, start doing what we've created because we are doing a uh, choreographed carving show. And the choreographed carving show is awesome. It's the Carver Apprentice. So I'll be the first one to say it because I, I think there's only two things that I've ever created in this carving world that uh, that 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 have never been done. And that's my heart of the tree carving, which is a tree. And then there's a heart at the bottom for the roots. That's the one carving I've ever created that I hadn't copied off someone else. And uh, and, and and this carving apprentice show. This is a cool show. So me and Kevin have filmed it. We're going to put it on YouTube sooner than later when we start shopping it because it's going to be in fairs. And I guarantee there's going to be lots of carvers and stuff all over America, all over the place that are going to start doing it and maybe making it better and, you know, going from building on what, what I've created here because it's cool. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's a great way into – it's a great way to, like, diversify. And that's what I'm starting to think about in carving is diversifying your portfolio and moving on just carving into so many different other things. But for bars, that's where we're here. That's why I'm here. Stay focused. The four saws you need, 2511, 501P, 620. And then the big, big saw is the 7310. I run up to a 40 inch bar, 42 inch Canon ultralight bar on that. Chain speed's a little slow. Echo, hello, you're my main sponsor. Guys, I would love the CS100. If anybody knows where to find a CS100 out there and or has one that they don't use, shoot me a message. I've been trying to get one for 10 years. And because it's illegal or the emissions doesn't work in Canada, it's like pulling teeth to get one. It drives me crazy. So, but I mean, like, how how am I how am I not able to have a saw that can run like a six foot bar? It's crazy. It blows my blows my mind uh, that that I have to go to like big competitions and you know do two cuts through a log because I can't just use one big saw, one big bar. Canon makes all the bars, and I don't have a saw that can use it. So, uh, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> TMI. All right, guys. So yeah, I mean, as far as it goes, if you get some time, if you want, please come down sawvalley.com, my website. Support that. And thank you for all the the beautiful comments that were said uh, in my last video where I talked about depression and I talked about, um, you know. Uh, just going through the artist block. And just so everybody knows, I know this is way late in the video and the majority of you are not here and most of you have probably checked out. Um, I, I'm not depressed. I am, uh, I, I, I not, uh, yeah, not depressed. I'm not, I had Carver's block and it does happen. I, I'm not depressed in any way. It's, it's just, a, it's a weird feeling and you'll, you'll know it when it happens or you won't know it for a while until it's, been a couple of weeks but um yeah i'm through it that's why i wanted to talk about it because i felt good and i feel good and i feel like i'm really excited for the new year i want to really really try to push chainsaw carving i'm going to bring back tool i'm sorry wife called again so wherever i was i think i was just saying you know Carver's block happens and I apologize. I'm just going to let this video ride because I think it's kind of funny that my wife keeps calling. We're getting Sophie a Christmas present. So we're talking about it. Um, but yeah, you know, next year is going to be big. And, uh, and I really hope we push things forward. Who knows? Like I was saying in the last video about a cut above, I don't, I'm not planning on it anymore. Uh, if that happens, cool. I I would love it, but I don't know. We'll talk about it when I'm not under a contract. 
and uh, I'll be a lot more forthcoming. But that's the one thing I was going to say. Next year, 2024, we are going to bring back uh, the uh, talks with the masters. So I'm going to bring that back. I'm going to start doing that again. I'm um, not sure if I'm going to make it a podcast or not. I don't know if that's something I'm that into, but I'm definitely going to do it on YouTube again. Um, but I have thought about doing it in a podcast and uh, it's probably not going to be just Carver's. I, I think Fultz and I will do it. I think uh, we'll see what Fultz's schedule is, but you know what? I'm open to having like multiple people. You know, different masters from different genres, different everything, and uh, and just having talks. And so that's going to be kind of cool. I'm excited about bringing that back. And then uh, videos, more videos, more carving. I'm more excited about carving this year because carving last year, I don't know. I just wasn't into it. And and some of the projects that we're doing are different, right? So like it's not something that you've seen; it's stuff you've seen already. But I just realized that, you know, I've done bar videos before and talked about them. But at that same time, there's so many new subscribers, and when you have 200 videos already made, you know, how do you uh, how do you you know find them all? So I might as well just keep making them. <laughs> And other than that, you know, it's a year end. We're going to do a year end review video. I'll do that next week. And I, uh, I just want to say thank you. You know, everyone who actually watches these videos. And if you're here, you've spent 40 minutes with me now. And that's a lot of time out of your day. And I appreciate it. And I hope you've learned something. And I hope that, uh, you know, you have a fantastic year. You're happy. Life is good. And if it's not good, chin up because shit happens and life gets better. It's true. I've been way worse than most of you ever will be. And most of you will never know. And uh, maybe one day it'll come out. But, uh, <laughs> but it, you know, it's all about picking yourself back up, hustling and getting yourself through it. And that's what I found to be the best thing. So for this video, as we've strained now into depression, blah, let's just say the cannon bars are amazing. Come to sawvalley.com and buy them. And uh, they're on sale. Yeah, shit. There's a bunch of them on sale um, because I'm going to put them on sale for Christmas because why not? Who cares? Um, I don't know if I'm allowed to actually, no, I bought them. I don't know if that's cool with the companies and stuff, but these bars, some of them are on sale and uh, I think it's still comparable prices, but who cares? You know, it's, 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 uh, it's Christmas time. So thank you very much for watching and I hope you have a very Merry Christmas. And uh, this video will be out tomorrow because my wife called three times and sorry for the jump, jump, jumps, but I got to edit this video now. And I love her, and I am excited that uh, it is almost Christmas break. I'm going to finish out a couple of little pieces here, and the end is here. See you later. Peace. Make sure you, uh, actually, if you do want to, uh, want me to talk about something, not, hey, can you film a video, or just, yeah, this is a full disclaimer, too, because it's like, come on. Hey, carve a husky dog this, blah, 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 because I got to do that. Awesome. Thank you. I'm sorry. I'm not going to do that. General things? Absolutely. Do you want to learn about how to do a Dremel this way? Do you want to do something like that? I can't just carve a giraffe. Everything I do is by commission. By that, That's the way it is for me. Um, if not, I can talk about products. I can talk about stuff like that and make a video about how to talk about it but as far as carving videos go for me making stuff has to be commissioned if you want to buy the giraffe shoot me a dm and then we can make a video about it for you but if you're just looking if if, if you have ideas you want me to talk about something if you want to ask questions if you want to jump in talks with the masters next year and you have a question and you want to come in and ask 
you know, maybe one of your favorite carvers. We're going to have really cool carvers who are already kind of on board with it. I'm going to, I'm going to pick the brains of some of my favorite carvers um, and some new young and up and comers who are content creators. You know, I'm going to probably get uh, Mike Jones and maybe James Elliott on at the same time or vice versa or by themselves, Simon O'Rourke. Uh, you know, I haven't asked him yet, so don't worry. I, I, you know, but like carvers of my generation that I love that can incite a lot of information to people that um, they will learn from or or business ends of things. You know, like I, I would love to pick Jason Emmons brain from Bear Hollow, who runs pretty much the biggest chainsaw carving company in the world. Um, I would love to ask him his questions. And also his beautiful wife some questions too, because they are a dynamic duo. And also, you know, uh, we'll we'll do all kinds of things coming up in 2024 where it's, you know, you name it, it's going to be there. And if you have ideas, please flood them in. Just don't ask me to carve the Grinch because you're stuck on the Grinch and <laughs> and I'm not doing it. <laughs> Okay, on that note, because it's so positive, go to sawvalley.com, check out the bars. And if it's all if all these, if this big ass pile over here sells, I'm gonna use the money, I'm gonna buy saber tooth, and then from that I'm gonna build this thing up. And if it works, cool. If it doesn't work, well, I've been talking about it for five years, so I'll just keep fucking doing it anyways. Later, guys. Peace. <laughs>